If you work out to look good, if that's your main reason for working out, I got some bad news for you. You're not gonna look good. It's true. One of the worst reasons to work out, especially long-term, is to simply change the way you look. If you want success, you gotta focus on something else. Mm, this Ooh. feels personally attacked. Yeah. Mm. I think a lot of people are gonna hear that and go, huh? Like, isn't that why you work out? Yeah. Isn't that? So uh, in a nutshell, uh, in a nutshell, it, when you train for looks, what tends to happen, and we'll get into why, but what tends to happen is you tend to sacrifice function and health in the pursuit of trying to look better. <clears throat> and then what happens when you lose your health and you lose function is you also lose your look. You also lose the aesthetic. So it's a losing game, and we know this. We know this with body-obsessed individuals. We see this with other arenas like plastic surgery. Like you keep chasing a look and they end up sacrificing what they were after in the first place. And when fitness is very true, like if you keep, if that's your main goal and that always and remains your goal, because I'm going to be honest, of course, that's the way people start, but it can't be how you end. If you're always chasing that, this is not going to be a good journey. You're going to have a tough time. And then when you sacrifice your health in pursuit of that, then you lose everything. You get none of it. Do you think, mm -hmm. do you think we ever convince people to switch their way of thinking? Or do you think this is kind of like, um, it reminds me of telling somebody that like, uh, who's really driven uh, to make money, a certain amount of money that like, oh, you'll find out when you get there that it's never enough and it's an endless pit and that, you know, that's not the answer to be to happiness. Happiness will be found through purpose and other, other ways. Do you, and does that person, does that person who's convinced that let's say whatever age, both for the money chasing and or the looks that they're chasing, mm -hmm. do you think us communicating that ever get somebody to change their mind? Or do you think that's one of those things that they have to go find out for themselves? You know, I think mm. it's both, but we, you know, we've had this discussion so many times uh, since started the podcast is one of the challenges for us was how do we communicate this in a way that sells it? Because you're right, Adam, like I could yeah. say this, but how am I going to sell it to somebody right now who's watching or listening, whose main Goal. The reason why that's the work got them there uh, in the first place. Yeah, right? and, and that's why we all started working out. I worked out, yeah. uh, and I still struggle with this for for a look. Right. So, how would you sell it to me as a kid? Well, here's how: if you're healthy, you're going to look good. So, the way you sell it is by telling people, "Well, you want to look good. The best way to look good yeah. is to move well and be healthy." Somebody who is very healthy, like really seriously healthy, like that, that means that they're strong, they're mobile, they don't have a high body fat percentage, they've got good movement patterns. That person looks good. So the health leads to the look, but the look does not lead to the health. And we know this. And so sacrificing health is a fast path to looking terrible. And I'm just selling it right now. Yeah. Right? That's what I'm trying to do. But it's true. It is funny, though, because like money is such a good example. Because yeah. you could chase the quick money and the, that could yeah. totally lead you astray. Yeah. It's the same thing. You could chase you know, the, the cheap fix to, to lose the quick weight or... Um, you know, apply the methods that's the most intensive at the time in order to produce this crazy result right now, uh, it's not going to last. And it, the reason why I brought and the money one up, because I think it is so parallel, because right. the answer to a lot of money too is find something that you would do for free. Yeah. yeah. Find something that you love that gives you purpose or that you would do and not get paid. And if you can find that, and then your odds of making money are much higher, are almost guaranteed. Yeah, because yeah. eventually you will. Like that's just if you are if you if you're not counting hours and you're not measuring. Oh my God, I spent an extra ten hours trying to learn that or do that thing, or I had to go train twelve clients for free to help. Like if you don't count that, you don't care because you would do it anyways because yeah. you love it. That's the path to financial freedom too. Yeah, it's kind of wild when you think about that, and it's the same thing goes for the health and fitness thing is like if you if you pursue it as a as a way of being healthier and taking care of yourself then the the byproduct is you end up having the best looking version of yourself too yeah, yeah. no and, and if you really break it down um and reverse engineer why we think certain things look good the whole reason why a relatively muscular relatively lean mobile and functional body is attractive is because it displays health Right. This is why we from an this is evolutionary theory, right? But I think it's just even if you don't believe in evolution, it's just true. If somebody uh displays those things, you can make a general assumption that that person's pretty healthy, right? Now, of course, on the extreme end, it gets really crazy, right? You get a pro bodybuilder or something like that. 
Although I think the average person looks at that and doesn't think that that looks good. I think what I'm referring to is what the average person would consider attractive looking. Um, and it's usually because it reflects fertility and health. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, the, the the value of this is, is in understanding that. So then when you're trying to navigate with your fitness and with your diet, if you steer towards health and function. So if you steer towards health with lifestyle, diet, and you steer towards function with your exercise, you're going to get a great deal of the aesthetic. Like it's that's just the byproduct. It's the side mm -hmm. effect of the side effect of, of being really healthy and mobile and fit is you look really good. But again, if you just do the look part, how often have we seen this in our space, right? Where they're just chasing, I want to look a particular way, and it leads to yeah. body dysmorphia. Look at it like dehydrating your your body, Dude. like you know, and like <laughs> like just all the the tricks and the quick things, yes. just to like shape and and alter like the way you look, just to present yourself a certain way for that moment in time. That's right. There's so many of those. You guys talking about this reminds me of something I just learned. I've never heard this term before until now. Have you guys ever heard of perception drift? Mm -mm. Okay, uh -uh. so we've all seen somebody. You guys, have, you've seen that person who has done so much plastic surgery that they look like you. You go like, oh my god! Like, do you like you see how bad? Like, it looks yeah. so bad. Yeah, yeah. You ever? So, you always wonder like, you always, how they like, not yeah, know how did they, they get there? Like, yeah. how they get there? So there's a term for it. It's called perception drift, and it happens over time. You, the way you perceive yourself, you do a little bit of the lip injection, you do a little bit of the face fillers, and you have a new perception of what you look like. And then as that starts to, to, to dissipate or change a little bit, then you have to go back and do it a little bit more, Ooh. and then you have a new starting point, right? What made me think about this, I was like, oh my God, one, I didn't know there was a term for it. And like, We've this, seen that in fitness so Yeah, much. you think, wonder at what That's point. what made me, that's when you just brought up the bodybuilder thing, uh, how you said like somebody else, like somebody who sees a like crazy looking body, the average person, not a fitness person, an average person sees a bodybuilder, most people go gross. Yeah. Most people, the same way that you probably look at the person with all the plastic surgery, yeah. the average person looks at a bodybuilder and goes, oh my God, that's gross. Yeah. And what it, what's wild about that is that that bodybuilder, and tell me you haven't been here before, you have got a bit of perception drift. How many times have you looked at your physique and been like, oh man, I don't feel that great. But then you looked at a picture and you compare, what you know, say five years goes by and you're yeah, at and worse. you look at old picture. You look at old picture like, damn, I look kind of good yeah, actually. But, and I thought <laughs> yeah. I looked bad. But you thought you looked terrible because your, your new perception. Yes. And it's called a perception drift. Yeah, you see huh. this You see this with both men and women. Uh, you know, with women, you'll see them get leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner. And they're sitting in the single digit body fat percentage and they're not healthy. Mm -hmm. Their body's not healthy and they're ignoring all the signs because they feel. And you see this with guys too where they push the training, they push the muscle, they push the whatever, or the bulk, you know, this was me forever, right? I pushed the bulk mm -hmm. and I was unhealthy, but I felt like, oh, I needed to get bigger. And, and again, and that's another reason why the aesthetic is such a terrible barometer because it's so subjective. Mm -hmm. It's so subjective. Now function, it, a lot of it's objective. Are you stronger? Can you move better? Right. Health, a lot of it is objective. Do I feel better? Am I getting better sleep? Do I have better energy? Blood markers, all that Yeah, stuff. blood markers. Like, you know, a lot of that is objective. Some of it's subjective, but a lot of it's objective. How I look, extremely subjective. It's mm -hmm. super subjective to the point where, look, people with body dysmorphia, um, they believe what what they say they see they, that's what they really think that's what that's yeah. the, what this perception drift is yeah. like explaining it did, I, the first time i ever heard somebody communicate that and i'm like oh my god that makes so much sense on how to explain because you've always even you bring up the the anorexic girl who thinks she's fat yeah. It's like you can't what well, you can't help but be that person who hears that girl communicate about herself and go like, how the fuck does she see herself yeah. as fat? Like yeah. I'm looking at her, she's anything but that. Did you see that? But it's been over time, yes. it's drifted in that. There place. was a video of this woman, uh, people were filming her. She was one of those Instagram like in social media will do this kind of too because you can distort yourself. And I think distorted bodies will get more um more likes and whatever. But then when you see them in person, yeah. Like there was this girl who people were filming because she had so many butt implants and stuff that in like when they're filming her, it doesn't like you could like it doesn't look right at all. Yeah. And yet she has this huge following because of the angles and stuff from. And so she's distorted like, oh, this. But she, I mean, it was so distorted. She, she had trouble moving. 
yeah. because of all the th stuff that she's doing. And I mean, her. and you got to think that a lot of, you know, just not to just to pick on the girls that have this, the guys that are pursuing that buff look that we don't get caught up in the same thing too, is that you're like, you know, you start off, I mean, and, and I think about it, Synthol would be if, a good if you were to oh, talk yeah. to like, these are like, those are crazy extremes, but even yeah. I, I, I'm trying to even pick apart myself. Right. And even pick on me. Like when I was 17 years old and, and, and insecure, and that was the reason why I got into working out. If you told me what out of shape, worst version of me at 30 looked like, I would have been happy with that. But if you asked me at 30 when I was that, I would yeah. be, oh my God, no. So it's a trip that, I mean, I'm guilty of this too. Yep. And and so at, at one point, do you realize like this is a, it, it's a never ending pit for yourself to be constantly using that as a barometer on, am I good or not good? Or am I, it's like versus what I know you communicate so well all the time, Sal, which is that focusing on being healthy and let yeah. that be your your north star let that be your driver because it won't steer you wrong because if you're always trying to be a healthier version of yourself more mobile more strong you know what i'm yeah. saying more, like the, yeah. if you're trying to be that that will lead you in the right it's direction also, hey sorry to interrupt we have a free guide titled understanding your mood stress and sleep it tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective it's a totally totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. There's also a complete picture that you don't get just from pictures or a reflection. We all know this, right? You meet that person and yes, they're also physically healthy looking, but they also have a vibrance about them. Yeah. They have, there, there's, there's much more than that. And, and, and it, it makes them attractive. And it's I don't holistically mean holistically balanced. Yes. And I don't mean it necessarily. They're happy. The, yes. They're happy. Right. So health also is spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy. When you're all, when you focus on health, as Adam's saying, we're talking about everything. And, and that is a great pursuit. It's a growth pursuit is what it is. Cause yeah. in order to get healthier in all those areas, mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, you're going to grow as a person. Um, if you worship your body, if you think you're going to get happiness out of looking a particular way, there, all the data in the world shows you that you're wrong, by the way. All mm -hmm. the objective data shows you this wrong. Every philosopher says this is wrong. Every spiritual and religious practice that's lasted 2,000 years will tell you that you're wrong. You're not going to get happy by looking a particular way. Do you know why people who work out and eat right are happier? It's not because they look better. Mm -hmm. It's because they're more fit, more healthy, and it's the pursuit of of health that leads to happiness. In fact, Arthur Brooks communicates this really well, and he's an expert on happiness. He knows all the data, and he says, look, he goes, you take someone who's a six on a scale of one to 10, and they spend all their time and money going from a six to a 10, mm -hmm. their happiness will be barely perceptible in terms of how much it goes up. Like all the money, all the time that it took to go from a six to a 10, plastic surgery, working out, diet, like perfection, everything, they, it would barely nudge the happiness meter uh, for them with yeah. that, with going from a six to a 10. Yeah, I, I was thinking about this too, and I, I'm st I still trip out like just what we've learned with the GLP ones in terms of like you know some of them having an impact on brain inflammation yeah. and how much that plays a factor in our behavior and our decision making process. Yeah. And it's like if if our decision making progress is it all you know tilted because our phys physical body is giving us all of these signals, it's interrupting that. Um, you know, where are we at? Like, so if I'm, if I'm just like specifically focused on this one thing, I'm ignoring all of these other signals and signs, you know, for me to make better decisions. Yeah. Poor physical health, um, is very closely connected to poor mental health. And I think people forget that some of your mental health comes from your actual brain itself, the actual physical structure of your brain. So if you're unhealthy, you have poor insulin sensitivity, your uh, your inflammation is high, your operating system, the hardware, right, your brain is going to operate differently and it's going to tilt, in some cases, in a very strong direction, more towards depression, darkness, lack of motivation, lack of focus. So simply becoming healthier can also change your mental state, just the physical aspect of it, not to mention the personal growth that comes along with that pursuit because then you also have this side of it. I was doing all this stuff over here and I positively changed these things, which was a struggle, but I was able to do it step by step and mm -hmm. show myself that I could do certain things and overcome these challenges and fail and get back on my feet and do it again and give myself grace. And 
that also contributes uh, to being happier. So, yeah. and this is the thing I, you know, I want people to understand. Again, I'm going to sell it, okay? If you chase health, you're going to look good. It's, I mean, you're going to get both. If you chase looks, you're not going to get either one. So, uh, and I hope I'm selling it right to somebody who's just focused on the look. Like, you want to look good, do what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, I think it's also important to communicate, like, what are the tactical things to get out of that? Like, if we all admit that, you know, we came from a place of that, what are the things that moved you away from that? Because you could say that to me all day. You could sell it to me all day long, and I can go like, yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah. I agreed. But then practicing it, like, is is another thing. Because, hmm. I mean, I, I caught myself just recently doing this, and I, and I think hopefully this helps. Like, I still, e even as 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 uh, as self aware and as much as I've progressed in this area, I still find myself doing things to c continue to practice that to remind myself. Meaning, um, so recently in this whole series of, that I'm documenting on YouTube. Um, I, I've, I've started tracking steps again. And one of the things that like, you know, obviously I'm doing it to show the audience body composition change and it's all the stuff like that. But I also, while I'm going through this, I'm always trying to, to learn, to build some of these practices to become part of my lifestyle and to do it for the health reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, cause being active and moving, we all know is a healthy thing. So how do I gr make this thing that I'm showing people on the, on YouTube, how to change body composition, but then I build it in as, so it becomes a behavioral change for me. So as I'm going through this, like one of the conversations I'm having with myself is like the new step goal is like 10,000 steps for myself right now. And so multiple times this week, I have found myself like going above and beyond helping my wife around the house. Like Katrina really handles so much of uh, our household and, and it's amazing. I love her for it and it's great and it works for us. Like she, like what I do, I handle what she does, she handles. But here's a situation where, you know, this is something I can do to support her. And it's also this win that I'm getting all this activity. Yeah. And so instead of me going like, oh, I hit my 10,000 steps, so I burned an extra 200 calories, or hopefully I shredded body fat percentage, I'm going like, oh, I'm a better partner. Mm. I'm a better husband. I'm happier. I help out. I, my house is in, in, in even better order. I like it clean mm -hmm. like this. So I'm like having that conversation with me that the, the steps are, are not equating to me leaning out faster, even though ultimately I know that's probably where that leads, right? I'm actually having the conversation with myself going like, oh man, like I'm, I'm att attached. There's all these other important things. There's all these yeah. other things that are far more important. Like my, like I see the way she came up to me and she's like, honey, you're so amazing. Like the fact that you do, what she doesn't know is like, it's partly motivated because I'm trying to get <laughs> <Yeah>. steps. So <laughs> but Dude, I've always thought that though, I've always tried to figure out a way to communicate that to clients too. Cause it's like, you're just going to stay here for an hour, just walking on a treadmill and like, why? You know, like go do something like productive in your house yes. and like get that kind of movement going and generating to benefit people around you instead of just being so self-focused. I, I used to communicate that to clients to play with their kids more. Yeah. Say, you, you know what's a great way to get your steps in? Go play with your kids. Yes. And they come back and be like, oh my God, this is yeah. great. Like I'm playing my kids. And I'm getting that activity. You're connecting, you know, the two. Hunter, I, we should start I, a breaker uh, treadmill uh, I, movement. I had yeah. the same thing again. This has been happening all week long. Where I'm like, like I've I've noticed that if if I just come here to the studio, we record, do my long little workout, and I go home, like I'll only land at like six or eight thousand steps. Mm. And so I have to intentionally go after those other steps. And so one of them was being the household stuff with Katrina. The other one was playing with Max outside. It's just like, this is just like, and I easily could have chose to lay inside mm -hmm. or lay on the floor and kind of do nothing, you know, pull that move as a dad. But it's like, it motivated me to do this. And so it's, I guess it's, it, to me, it's how you, how you take the message that you try to present to people all the time about changing the focus away from the aesthetics. But I, I think the important thing to communicate is that this doesn't ever end. Like I'm, I'm fully aware of it. I think I've definitely moved yeah. over that direction for a long time now. It doesn't mean that I ever stop having that conversation. By the way, perception drift, now that I'm thinking about it, as we're talking, it's popping into my head. That can happen by looking at other people as well, not oh, just yeah. looking at yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like there was a time, like all of us are old enough to remember a time when lip injections were not that common. They've become so common now that I think now people are like, that's what normal lips look like. For, I'm just using one silly example. I feel like, uh, I think it's very important if you don't want to suffer from perception drift with yourself is to be very careful with your social media in particular. Now the real world is still largely occupied by everyday average regular people. 
But when you're on social media and your algorithm is a lot of perfect airbrushed or Photoshopped or whatever bodies and people, that's probably going to call. Oh, no, no, I don't say probably. The data shows this. It will change your perception of how you look and where you, you know, for lack of a better term, rank. Because if you're always seeing perfect people, you start to look less and less, you start to look worse and worse to yourself. They've connected this now, especially yeah. to, to, to teenage uh, kids, girls in particular, where social media is causing like this new explosion of, of body dysmorphia and issues because it's like you're, you're scrolling through, your brain doesn't know that it's pictures on social media that you're looking yeah. at one in a million type of person. That's your environment. That's that becomes that's your you're environment. Perceiving and looking at, and it's I, it's the thief of joy, as they say. Yeah, comparison. and I love to tell people this: like we manage gyms for a long time. Okay, that's already a self selection bias of people who work out. How common are six pack abs in gyms? Rarely ever. They're still rare yeah. in a gym. Even in the gym, yeah. Even in a gym, they're right. rare. Yeah. So, but yeah, you go through social media, you think everybody's at six pack. Nobody does. <laughs> Most people don't. You know, it also highlights too how how little people get out these days because they end up spending so much time online. That yeah. becomes a reality. Yeah. So you can sit here all day long and be like, "That's only one in a million you're looking yeah. at." But if they yeah, have, I see it all the time. That's right. If they see it all day long on Instagram, you never go outside. You don't do a lot of social things outside with real people. It's already happened to to a, a large degree, though. Do you guys know the original Tarzan? I don't know if you guys are. He was an Olympic swimmer. Okay. Okay. He was considered. Super muscular. When he, Doug, if you could pull up oh, yeah. the original Tarzan. I've seen this. He was an Olympic level swimmer. Uh -huh. But if you look at him. He's just like a lean guy. He just, he I, mean, I mean, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't he even qualify. Healthy. He doesn't look Yeah, well, he looks healthy. healthy. Okay. He would not, his, if he had an Instagram page, the, he, posting shirtless he pictures. Scarzard would get, or whatever that He would get name zero, uh, yeah. zero likes uh, because yeah. of the way he looked. But back then he was considered like this. Oh yeah, right there with the shirt off, top right. That right there. He was like, oh my oh, God, yeah, have just, you seen his, he just looks like a, just an average like dude. a, like a, like a fit dude, yeah. you know? But everybody, when he, when it first came out, uh, everybody was like, oh my God, he's like the super body <laughs> type of deal. <laughs> Isn't well, that crazy? I mean, How talk, much about, we've changed? talk about, yeah, perception drift on our entire society, right? Oh, on everything. So, on everything. I, know, I think that's And so they well. say, you know, I, I know we talked, you know, I mean, men have experienced this for sure. I mean, we grew up in the eighties and nineties. That was like the, those are the decades of... <laughs> Arnold and uh, sorts of action and, and hero. Stallone, bro. Huge. I remember when Die Hard came out. It, one of the reasons why it was such a popular movie was uh, Bruce Willis yeah. didn't look like he a bodybuilder. He wasn't super jacked uh, yeah. and like shredded. Everybody, nothing. I remember literally. I remember my uncle saying because I was a kid. And they're like, you got to watch this movie. It's like a regular guy. It's just like a guy. <laughs> yeah. and he's angry and he has a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like whoa, it's realistic because he's like a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Could be any one of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what they were literally I'm saying. In. I know. Yeah. So funny. Anyway, okay, Doug, I got to ask you this. We're supposed to talk about Caldera. You <clears throat> you do their whole line. You have a routine, yeah, Pretty much, right? yeah. So what's the routine that you do? Because first off, you always look so good. What's well, thank you, Sal. I appreciate that. that. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what's the routine? I, do, I just use the oil. I don't use the other stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't use every one of their products, but I do use their oil, which is called the good. I yeah. use that the serum. At, at nighttime. Okay. I use the, uh, I think it's called the base layer, yep. which cream. is the cream yep. during the day. I use that. I use their sunscreen on days I know I'm going to be outside. I do use that. Uh, and I love that sun sunscreen. And then the, the other thing for cleaning your skin, I will use that when I shower the in the evening. Slate. Yeah, the Are you supposed slate. to put the yeah. base layer on first? Uh, and then the, the, the well, oil. I don't use the two at the same time. Oh, typically, you go cream in the morning, oil at night. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I don't I know, know the I exact don't do it right, protocol. I go, I go base layer in the morning after I get out of the shower, and I do clean the clean slate in there. I also use the the soap. I think the soap is one. Of yeah, the soap best. is awesome. The yeah. soap is one of the best products. Justin, you like their sunscreen. You're like Mr. Sunscreen. Yeah. Why? Well, mainly like my neck. I'm always. I, <laughs> <laughs> he is literally a redneck. Red <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be a redneck. Do you, you take your shirt off and you're like the guy that has the ring around? Uh, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> I hate that, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Justin, by the way, dude, we were over here. I don't know if you were in here, Adam. And I mean, how, we've all been doing this podcast for 10 years. Yeah. I feel like I know every crazy story from you guys. Right? <laughs> I think so too. But Justin, I even forgot we were going to bring Bro, Justin up. said something earlier and, and I'm like, what? 
I, okay, you gotta say. So you you said out loud, and I cut you off. I'm like, I gotta bring this up on the podcast. Yeah. Well, I'll you, tell the story. Oh, wait, uh, and we, what, it's a story he's never told us. Yeah. Which is okay. Go ahead. I mean, it's hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Okay. So I I went to Mexico and um, I was helping out and building houses, doing a mission trip, you oh, know, okay. the church. Which, which and, I didn't know you did that either. Hold on a second. Yeah, I've, done, I've done that a few times. I didn't know you'd done that. Yeah. yeah. God, he's yeah. terrible, bro. He doesn't share yeah. anything. What? Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Between no, the we, two of you guys. We barely know anything. <laughs> I pretty much told you guys everything this about was my life. This is Bible. <laughs> it, it, yeah, you've met the pastor. Anyway, um, so yeah, we, we went down there and I was part of the build crew. And so we we uh, framed houses and we built the whole thing to where they could literally move in. And they were, I mean, they weren't much bigger than this studio, uh, each one of them. But we built like maybe five of them. That's great. And there so was different crews there. Uh, I was like 13. So that's um, great, dude. Yeah. And so we went down there and um, I was hanging out and, and you know, the, the water there is like, you want to avoid it yeah. at, at all costs. And so I did. And I was like, eating some of the food and everything. And I, I thought I was okay. And uh, it turns out I actually had like um, something with ice in it, uh, which duh, like I, I didn't even put those two together. Ice is water. Yeah. yeah. Ice is water. <laughs> yeah. It's, you and know, then it melts. I missed that in science. It, it melts in your, in your Coke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyways. Coke doesn't kill everything. Yeah, really. yeah. So I was at my, so right from there, we, we went to my grandma's um, and my brother and I, and my, parents and and so i ended up sleeping in my grandma's bed that night in mexico no this is when i got home oh okay. i just got home from mexico that's why i just tell that story god okay I was, to oh, set this part such up. a good story talk you can you, yeah can you by the way can you predict what's about to happen yeah. he was in mexico yeah he had the water yeah, yeah okay. okay all right i shit the bed now you guys want you want the punchline right away <laughs> hold on hold on yeah wait wait, wait. Yeah. You're, in, yeah. you're in bed <laughs> storyteller here here you go <laughs> <laughs> I shit the bed. I shit my grandma's Sorry, bed. Guys. It I happened. It was overnight. Bed, my brother actually slept in the bed with me. Whoa! Whoa. You shit in the bed while I had no bed? idea. But that's the thing. It's like I. It, it was like <laughs> in my sleep. So whoa! I was just uh, get up and I'm like, oh god, and. It was, <laughs> Everywhere on my side, and and I felt I, really bad. We, I think we ended up just like throwing away like all the uh, sheets, and and uh, oh god, anyway, bro. like my mom was like, "Oh my god!" Like, it, yeah. So I felt bad about that, but yeah, that that was my entire wait, story. It was like, wait, I shit my grandma's wait, bed. Wait, wait. So there you go. That's your grandma's bed. Yeah. Hold on a second. I feel bad. You slept about through it. it? Yeah. How did you do that? that? <laughs> I was so tired, dude. Uh, that's, you understand? That's like, really I tired. Sleep. I didn't get any sleep, and, and, and it was funny because the trip was like we we all had to sleep in this I've one that building in my life. that like it, it had all these bunk beds and it was open, and so th there was like a bunch of guys that would stay up and play games and all this stuff. And I'm like really tired, dude. I don't. I'm like not a good person to be around when I'm tired. I'm like a big asshole. I'm yeah. more than Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a thousand percent <laughs> like more of an asshole than Adam. <laughs> And I'm just like, and I, I ended up losing it. I felt bad. I like snapped. And these are all like, like church dudes, you know, oh, I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. In front, in front of my pastor and everybody. Crazy, and, and I just was like losing my mind. And, uh, and so anyways, I was very tired. I get home and, and you know, I, I just was out like blackout out and wow. uh, wake now, up. Now when you, when you woke up and you smelled it, did you know it was you or were you like, Man, no, your nobody you did, had yeah, checked it first. A, yeah, you, you checked did. your brother. I knew it. I knew I was you like, did. Oh my god, dude! Why? Why? I'm like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's me. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> That's wild. Now I heard, so I told you guys what happened to me with my cousin's party. Uh, that, but that was because the guy was drunk, right? Like what? we, oh. my cousin. You remember I've told you stories about my cousin who had the trailer park, lived in the trailer park. We used to throw fucking like three hundred person parties at his house. So he had I, a. I think I remember. He had a, he had a double wide trailer that his parents lived in, and they used to travel all the time. They used to have they had a they had a cock farm. 
Okay, so they had roosters, right? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, you yeah, said, yeah. You yes. said it I like the way you yeah, yeah. Yeah. described that. So they they and they used to they used to go back to the Philippines and stuff. So he, he was like actually a, a world champion. Without, I won't sell sell him out on the on the podcast and say his name and stuff of that, but he was a world champion cockfighter, like mm. literally known in the he's famous in the Philippines. Wow. So my that was that's my brutal my thing. cousin's stepdad, and he lived on this farm that was probably i don't know probably five acres worth of all you, these, these roosters. so many crazy people <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every time you say a story i'm like wow yeah. adam always sees the good in everybody yeah, yeah. You know what I'm he's like, oh, this yeah. guy yeah, they yeah. fight animals really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of suspect so so we so we lived on these five acres there was a double wide trailer that they lived in in, in this <clears throat> in this place and had a gate in the front so it was great because we could throw parties and close the gate so cops couldn't get in or anything like that and we would throw like big old 300 person and kegers and a double wide trailer. Most obviously, everybody's mostly outside and stuff like that. But anyways, when the night when the night would be over, like you you crash on whatever bed, couch, car. I've slept in my car so many times. You know, laying in the back of my little Acura Integra, sleeping with the car cover. Like I've had crazy nights like that. And one night, we are sleeping in my my cousin's parents' uh, bed. You know, in their king bed. And there's probably four dudes. You know, like sleeping like this. Yeah. You know? But we're passed out and drunk. You know what I'm saying? We're drinking all night long and stuff like that. And I woke up soaked because the dude next to me pissed the bed. Oh, yeah. and it was like I was soaking Man. wet, and I was like, "Oh my god!" In his, oh, it was gross. yeah, it was his. But it, I mean, he got all of us. I mean, he he peed that much <laughs> that everybody who slept in that bed oh. woke up wet from this dude. But I mean, that was why he was. I can't imagine dude. chitting and being like I, sober. I didn't like, imagine it either. It just <laughs> happened, dude. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was like, really, just, yeah. my body like, was just you like, exhausted. Out, like, you had to been so exhausted. So exhausted. Too. Very you relaxed. Think, was like, a, thank God was, nobody was trying to do it. was fast you. or was it like happening over five minutes? I don't oh, know, God, dude. dude. Oh, Obviously, God. I don't know if I was dreaming. You and then Doug's going to be so mad at you. I for bringing I went to Vegas with a buddy of mine years ago and we got back to the room and we drank a lot. And I'm in the middle of the night. He woke up. And it was dark, and I could hear him waking up. And I'm like, "Hey, oh, what's up, man? What are you doing?" And then I hear, in the corner. I hear water. Yeah, hey, I've seen that hitting the ground. Yeah, and I'm like, "No." You go to no enough way. parties, you've seen yeah. that. A and he was just—he was half asleep. He yeah, just, yeah it was yeah. peeing in the side of the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've seen that. I've seen that actually a couple of times where guys have done that, just being so so drunk. So when you used to do your uh, mission, a more positive, lighter side of the yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, hold on, let's chip the guy. That, was he with you there? Uh, no, he wasn't there. It okay. was uh, it was the high school uh, and it. junior high kind of group. Do you remember if you did stuff like this voluntarily, or is this stuff your parents made you do? Um, I think because I was supposed to do a few of these, but I, I think I, I I actually wanted to do it because I was I I enjoyed building things, <laughs> and mm. and it was like an opportunity that I could. I could give back and, and, you know, like help out. So anytime like, I have a skill and I can help out with it, I was always happy to oh, do it. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, I mean, could you think like, uh, I feel that's like got to be a good thing for a kid, very especially good. if you're, if you're a kid, like if, like our kids are pretty privileged. Um, yeah. So I feel like it would be a good thing for them to go. I'm, I'm always like trying to promote. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, that way they could see what it's like for some people. They can go help them. You know, I feel like, yeah, I just wonder how many, uh, like, I mean, I'm curious what your kids would do. Like, would they go begrudgingly or would they like go willingly? Like what would they, what would they be? I'm yeah, trying to remember because I was supposed to do think... a couple. I can't even remember. That's why I wanted to ask you. Yeah. I can't remember um, how my attitude was about it. Like, did I want to do it? Did, did my parents, were my parents trying to make me? I just remember I was supposed to go in a couple. There was something that ended up happening. There was like, a, I remember one time I was supposed to go down to Mexico to do it. And there ended up being like a crazy, like gang, gang shooting type thing that happened wow. like right before. I was like, okay, you're not going. I remember my wow. parents telling me. But I can't remember how I felt like. Both of my older kids have done yeah. volunteer work because it's part of the, the schools that they would go to. And each time they came home, they were like lit up. Better like, kids. Yeah. No, I mean, just, just, it, you could tell that they did something joyful. <clears throat> yeah. They're talkative and they're, and both times they, they were packing food for homeless is what they mm -hmm. were doing. Oh, actually over here, not too far from here. Yeah. I think for me, like I, I was always, it, it was the, um, school driven ones I would do begrudgingly or like the river road cleanup or like those things. I had to do a lot of those and like community service yeah. stuff. <laughs> That was just like, it's like, you're just clocking hours. Like if it had like purpose behind it and you're helping a family or like, yeah. you know, I don't know. I guess I was more drawn to that because it's like, it, it that makes actually, sense. yeah, that makes sense. It, I, I, I remember, I still remember tangible. the very first time that I ever did the Christmas thing and I was, didn't, I didn't realize how much I would like it. It was mm -hmm. more like, Hey, I should do this originally. 
And then when I did it, I realized like, oh, wow, that was really fulfilling. Bishop yeah. Barron called that, um, he referred to that as spiritual physics, that mm. oh, you, yeah. if you want to feel filled with love, to pour it out. And the more you pour out, the more you're filled. You're filled. I feel like I've heard Arthur Brooks talk about that too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not like, an like uncommon. The, like, the, like the ultimate. Like, he, doesn't he talk about that? Ult, I think now he his, talks about it from a data. Uh, yeah. He, he doesn't yeah. he talk about that for like uh, like his most recent book. I think I believe is it gives him that like your your back phase of your life is like the teaching. Ulti- yeah, giving, it's teaching yeah. and giving, and like that's the ultimate fulfillment is yes. to be able to work hard your whole life to learn a craft and to do something with purpose so, then to give that back is like so my ultimate. wife had an experience uh recently that where she was um you know part of this 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 journey for us this this christian journey has opened us up to a lot of things so now she's uh she's always been very generous but she was at um she was at a restaurant and a homeless person walked in asking for some water and my wife saw her and gave her uh, a bunch of money. And the woman looked at her and said, oh, thank you so much. And then went to hug Jessica. Now, this is a homeless person. They're dirty. And my wife said, I would have never before felt like, but she goes, and I, I, I just, I, I wanted to hug her. and gave her a big hug. Mm. And she said, she felt, she called me up and she's like, I feel so blessed. I said, what do you mean? I got to hug this woman no, uh, and give that to her. And that's that spiritual physics that you, uh, yeah. that, you know, that they yeah. talk about. Yeah, it's interesting. It changes it's, you. Yeah, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I've always thought about like, uh, how would you give back with fitness? Like, how would that work? I've the always thought you about- What you think you're like, doing right now? Yeah. What the fuck are you think you're doing right now? This is free. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Adam's like, talking me down. <laughs> He's like, let me Stop. find, let me find a way I can, can give away. This guy's like, let me find a way I can give more of our stuff away. That's no, this guy's like, we give a program out every hey, time dog, somebody calls I'm in. Like, what, is, what, are we, what are we on, Doug, right now? 2,500 yeah. and something yeah. <laughs> hours of free content. Yeah, I'd yeah. say we've given some stuff for free, no, dog. If you're <laughs> privy, like, there's definite ways to win free stuff from us always. Yeah. Like, yes. We just always provide that as an option. Hey, no. I'm glad we do. I'm just saying, you don't yeah. see that in a lot of companies. No, but I'm, well, I'm hey, listen, of- also this. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, all jokes aside, the, uh, the the way that this business since day one has been able to, to build and scale, the number one place has been MAPS Fitness Products. And from day one, we've been giving those away from uh, every yeah, week. Uh, every week, we have a minimum of what, uh, eight to 12 people yeah. that we give a minimum of eight to 12 programs you, every single, which you, is, the, that is the way we well, feed our families and we built this business. You know what I was thinking? And we led with that. But you know what I was thinking though? I was thinking of like the impact uh, <clears throat> that fitness can have, constructive fitness can have, especially on kids. Like think about high school kids who don't really have anywhere to go yeah. after school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they could go, imagine if they had access to a gym or something like that, right? With some coaches. That could help them out. I've always thought about something like this. How could uh, yeah? You know, I'd love to be involved with it. Yeah, I mean, that's what, what drew that me like? back to high school. You know, to help with the coaching. Yeah. It just, and, and that's the thing is, you just it's realize so impactful at that age. Too. Oh my god, yeah. And and you know, that's the thing is, you don't get that immediate return of like, oh, thank you, yeah. and like, I'm not like getting a lot of high fives or anything. But yeah. like, you know, you see them. Um, like, I I just went uh, this weekend back to uh, a game, and they're undefeated this year. And no so way! I was like, "Oh, that's wow, great, this dude. is amazing!" And the like, team that you're no longer coaching. I'm no longer coaching. <laughs> Obviously, I, thank you for bringing that they up. Were, but they were zero seven. <laughs> no, no. We, we, bro, oh, that's not true. No, no. He laid the foundation. No, okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, got there, I got there and things got worse. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was on a podcast talking about it. There you were. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here we are, right? Uh, but, uh, I'm gone and now they're doing great. Um, but, anyways. You yeah. laid the foundation for yeah. all the but principles was, that they laid. They I saw, by okay, now. so there was like, there was freshmen and sophomores <laughs> that, like, I was like going out of my way to help. It was all your recruiting, that, that's why they're doing <laughs> good now. <laughs> we kept them together. They gel they became a solid unit and they applied a lot of the principles we were teaching the varsity at the time and they actually became a force and that's it was great. like it's great to see that that's cool but it's just like yeah i did and, and again i didn't like that's how i look at it it's yeah. like oh oh fuck i can't get this right now yeah. but it's not about me so yeah. speaking of a return on investment I, I, be honest i want you guys to be honest with me right now Okay, no lying. No making up numbers. <laughs> exactly how many times have you guys played that expensive video game that you bought here for the studio? He hasn't played it yet. Okay. I haven't. Zero for you. How many times have you played a full game? Oh, God, quite a few times now. Uh, More than t- five? 
No, about five. Five times. Doug, yeah. how many times have you played it? Five to seven. Okay, so <laughs> so you guys have played this like twelve. How many times have we had that thing? Well, okay, bro, well, we've had it for like two weeks. We've had it for like two weeks, and that's yeah. like I, I have a job, man. Hey, I know. I, yeah, we, I have a job. <laughs> I have a job too, hey, guy. Hey, I'm not the one I want to write and spend shit. thousands I mean, and thousands of dollars. Well, I would hold this until a year goes by, and if we're not using it, then you can glitch. That's, that's I'm going Nikki. to for sure. Yeah, I, this guy comes in. I can't wait. Adam comes what in. What if Adam becomes a pro I, driver? I, I don't know. First of all, I used to think I was, do a, I used to think I was a great closer. I don't know how he convinced my partners to didn't buy. He this. didn't convince me. I this wanted is the damn incredible thing. video game system. <laughs> it's like it's not a video game. Bro. It's a video game. What is it? Not it's a simulator. 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 Okay, it's, it's a, a real it's a, life simulator. Okay, it's a, it's a what do they call it? It's like a car racing. It's a simulator. It's simulator. called a race simulator. But it's a video game. Yeah, like no, I draw not a video game. Sal, you can spec that out. So you're not going to go. To a, you know some kind of like arcade and be able to jump. You guys oh, own really not. cars. You no, know, right? this yeah, is like, real. Like and you can actually change it to where you are literally driving one of your cars. That's you how you mean real. a car that you actually own that yes. you can go drive for reals. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you can take it on a track. And I can, it makes yeah, no I can, wear and tear. It makes a lot of shit because when I crash on there, I'm not Stop. out. I'm not out hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm, 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 I get right back on. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, get, that's yeah, the yeah. positive side of that. Oh my god! Yeah, Cracks me up. Because I had to bring it up because yeah. I was laughing the, the other day. I saw Maybe you play. We'll do a raffle. All right, right DoorDash. <laughs> hey, listen, I eat the food, right, Doug Asher. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm with Doug. Ask us in a year on because uh, I I've already told Justin. I was just talking. Has the staff with, tried it yet? Of course, yeah. they're using yeah. it all the Cole time. Is like Cole's got the record right now. With it. Yeah, yeah it's like, right. Did Dylan? Did you pass him yet? I did, but then he got back in front of me again. Now. Oh yeah. So Listen, I want you guys to know that I was trying to give you guys a raise. They wanted to buy a video game system. <laughs> <laughs> the back, bro. Hey, you the guys. Look at hey, the team morale. We're you guys a three dollar raise or that? No, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. But it, it's it is pretty. I mean, it is incredibly elaborate. It's, Holy uh, shit! It's, it's, it's so. You got, have you guys watched the movie uh, Gran Turismo yet? Yeah, I did. Is that actually, what the guy used? I, yes, that's what he I used to become a yeah, real. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, he actually used a, a lesser one, and, but like a lot of that has been now. Like that's a model now. Like mm -hmm. it has become a model now where there's several, if not, I don't know. Keanu how Reeves did it. It, it, to, and he just raced like in some Grand Prix. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's uh, look it up now. Doug. How many how <laughs> many race car race. drivers are born <laughs> from uh, race simulators? What? Now? Dude, I, I don't know. I I would put it past Adam. Adam's pretty start obsessed. Racing? Yeah, yeah. Do not put it past. I know me. why you got yeah, it because yeah, you got dude, last yeah. place. I put my mind so to shit. <laughs> I put my mind to shit, bro. Look the fuck. I'm out. obsessed with something yeah, else right now. But if I get obsessed with that, it'll be over. Because you were just. Adding fuel to my fire, I, know, yeah. I might become a pro driver just to prove you wrong, <laughs> exactly. just to get my shit, and then I'm gonna be like, "Told you." When we raced the cars, I knew this would happen. I saw Adam, I'm like, "Oh great!" Don't act like oh, if we great. didn't get like one of those like arm wrestling machines, you would be fucking use that every day. I mean, yeah, right? Yes. It's not gonna be as loud. Or one of those punching that, bags yeah, that he loves punches. to do. Oh, look at my punching score, uh, my gripper. <laughs> oh, look at my gripper. <laughs> You've made them go out of the back to go get it just yeah. to show off, dude. What are you talking Talk about? Talk about that. It costs twenty bucks. We just <laughs> we just got back from a speaking engagement in Florida. Sal spoke at the Cabral's event, and Dr. Cabral's team mentions that they were testing people's grip strength, and Sal's ears well, perked up. He's about to go on stage. This whole thing is all about that, and he finds out there's a grip test where they're competing you can't against everybody. Anything else. Who has the biggest grip in the in the yeah. whole area? He's like, he's like, I want to do that. He's like, well, after your talk, we'll set it up so you go do it. So as soon as he gets done with his talk, right, comes out as the first thing. He's like, where's the grip test at? We're looking all over. They so well, we don't have it out. Someone's yeah. put it away, so he makes somebody go in the back, go get it, <laughs> and bring it out, so he can show everybody his grip strength. 163 pounds. I I mean, you put it down. He You're said, like, I, Dr. Cabral said, nobody gets over 160. That's all I'm going to say. You didn't break it, though. I just, <laughs> damn it. Did so, you find any for yeah. me, Doug? As a number of people have become uh, Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's pretty cool how, I mean, it's, I mean, that's pretty wild to think that they've been able that's to, crazy. to create something in a video game, okay? That's crazy. That actually translates to, uh, to driving. I would say the only thing. I could see myself getting motion sickness with that. I, I have, I, I threw up. So I have to take I have to take a, 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 a oh yeah, anti-nausea measure. So yeah, it does, it'll get to me every after. time if you go hard on well, it. Well, I am now just as a precaution, but I've I've thrown up twice by, by by doing it. So, but I mean, it's like anything else. I sure I have to acclimate, and this is what I get for like never doing it. Also, three hours, right? Yeah. So are, I, they, are the games expensive on that? Or no, whatever? no, they're not that no, expensive. No, no, no. No. We play for like a, a membership yeah. for like. <laughs> 
Yeah. I remember when you guys got it. I was sweating it. when you, you asked that. that right money. There, yeah. And then Adam's like, oh, it was man, like I have to get separate video games. 30 bucks for the I, year or something. I started laughing so no, hard. No, that was not. Like, a, that sucks. No, we don't have not. any games with it yet? Yeah. No, no, no. no, no, we, no. we downloaded all of them. All, but uh, <clears throat> the thing that is what, the only thing, everything else I swear is the, the, the steering feels exactly like the car you're driving. The braking feels gas, everything. Weird. Um, you don't feel the speed. Right. Because you, you're, you're, I not, mean, there's, you're not moving. Yeah. You're, I mean, even though they have the D box, you are moving, but you're not moving forward. Right. So it, there is a, there's a bit of a yeah, like, you, you have to, pull you have to get life. used to, like, one of the first things everybody does that gets on that thing. Like, you think, like, because it's like a video game, you think, oh, if I played video games, I'll be able to just get in here. Like, no. Like, you get in there, you are all over the place. Right. It's hard. It's really hard to get used to it. Once you get used to it, you realize, like, oh, wow, like this car, I'm coming up on this hairpin turn. And I'm doing 120 miles an hour, and it doesn't feel like 120. Oh, yeah. And then you wonder why you spin all out. It's like you would never in real yeah. life take a turn at 120 like that. And so you have to learn like the the speeds going into the turns That's and crazy. stuff like that. That's crazy. Oh, speaking of tech and stuff, did you guys hear about, uh, I think it was Google, <coughs> what they just got approved to do because no. to power their AI? Did you hear about this? No. Doug, look up Google oh, nuclear, nuclear reactors. Yeah. They just got approval to build Dude, that's and, and have and own- I think seven mini nuclear just reactors. Just for Google. Just, just to power didn't their- you, Didn't you tell me, weren't you guys the ones that told me that Disney, uh, World, Disney, Disney World owns the they right? They own the rights to a, to be able to build one, a nuclear reactor. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Wow. see, it's agreed to purchase right there. In the, uh, move up a little bit, Doug. It's agreed to purchase uh, nuclear energy from small modular reactors being developed by a startup called Kairos Power. By the way, these new nuclear reactors are amazing. Hmm. They're smaller. They're way more efficient, and you—they don't—they can't melt down. You can't have these the accidents that some of those old models. Oh have. wow! Yeah, they're, and some of them, I believe, run on the waste of other nuclear reactors. So older nuclear reactors will produce a little bit of waste. <coughs> They'll so run what off. What are we of all that. fighting over? It's like why don't we just do that for the energy You're, system, dude? Nuclear power. We have the future of energy here already. Yeah. Just people are. Yeah, dude. Just it's uh, unpopular for some reason, but it it. It's the because of the fear the mongering, but like you said, if if they have all these fail safes now, and yeah. it's, they've improved the, it, and so the footprint isn't as great. No, uh, so that's the other thing is the environment, like because you don't want like a nuclear reactor like right where you're surfing or whatever. Like no, but they're clean. <coughs> like even the old nuclear reactors are <coughs> so much cleaner than other energy. It's one of the cleanest sources of energy that we have. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's always interesting to me, like when we get stuck in a, in a situation like this with the fear around something like this. Like, I mean, how did we ever even get to planes? You got to think that the first time when yeah. we were trying to take off on planes, just a couple would crash and you would think that you would like, why wouldn't you just like- There were very little regulations back then. Yeah. I mean, that's why like, yeah. you think of some of these things that, that we use today, if you allowed the same logic to be applied, yeah. okay, back then as how the way we apply the logic around the, like the nuclear reactors yep. and things like that, that we put regulations, like no way, this is unsafe. You can never do this. We wouldn't have progressed in some things that we all use every no. single day. The best example of that are the <clears throat> um, the try the the FDA and its approval process for drugs is so crazy. It yeah. costs a billion dollars oh, yeah. to take a drug from conception to market. I think that's so dumb. Which means <clears throat> which means there's a lot of con concepts that never even get. How considered. hard would it be, Sal? Mm. It makes no sense to me. Like. I I feel like if I was on the brink of dying and I, I had the option. This is a sensitive like, subject for me. With, like this, to me, I'm on the brink of dying and I have an option of, hey, we haven't tested this. This is high risk for you, but this is what we see right here. It's your choice. Yeah. I, I mean, I would like at least the choice of that. Or you could go the safe route. This is the one that's been 10 years tested, this and that, and it may improve by 20, may improve this you by 20%. This is sensitive to me. I had a family member yeah. who, who was terminal and she couldn't use whatever she wanted. And I remember telling the doctor, I looked at him, I said, she's terminal. But what's yeah, the worst what, that could what, happen? Yeah, exactly. What? It's going to kill her. She's going to die. Why can't she just, she should be able to use crack cocaine if she wanted to, if she, just to make herself feel Absolutely. better if she's already terminal. It's insane to me. Yeah. I, there's there's got to be a middle ground somewhere. I, 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 I Maybe like a, it'd be nice I, if they had a rating system where that's it's what like. Because I, mean, I understand why there's regulation. I'm, by the, yeah. by, my, my, my point of that is not, oh, get rid of all regulations so all no, drugs no. are just free yeah, for all. No. You can have you it, but then you the should process. give. It, you should have an option. Yeah, for the ones that haven't passed through yeah. all that, and then stuff. you end up becoming like you're part of the trial. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. isn't AI going to disrupt a lot? Of yeah, that yes. Of the yes, because you're going to be able to the... simulate it so fast. Yeah, yeah, you're they've gonna... already done that with AI, where they've identified uh, chemical pathways and potential medicines uh, by going through hundreds of thousands of options. 
Yeah. And that, and then it narrows it down to a couple that then a drug company will, will look at, but still it costs a billion. That's crazy. Dollars. A billion. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you brought this up, Adam, the, the, the pharma industry is very, you know, when you're trying to raise that much money, you know, you, it, there's gonna be a lot of corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, why, like why they advertise on TV. You ever wonder why they advertise on TV? You can't buy a drug without a doctor prescribing it. Why do they advertise? So they can influence media. That's yeah. why they become well, a big part of their budget. I mean, you can kind of see like, why too, like, it, you know, certain drugs that are really cheap are like very easily accessible and, yeah. and available. Like they don't want you to know about that. Like, cause yeah. you know, of the amount of money they have to spend to put into that. And I mean, we're a machine of it. We're one of how many, I think we're only one of three or four countries or less that actually allow uh, advertising for uh, drugs. Very, yeah, we're one of the very few. There's le I know there's less than four, and it makes up a majority of advertising revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, eighty percent. Yeah, it's fucking and it, crazy. It's, and they do that so they could have influence because when you're a media company, yeah, you're not buying drugs from seeing the commercial. That's no, not it. It's, they're your doctors. It's their, yeah, creating the narrative. That's right. That's right. Hundred percent. Does, uh, does RFK talk about that? Yeah, yeah. he wants to eliminate. He, he said, you know, he wanted to eliminate um, their ability to advertise on TV. Which mm -hmm. I think just it, it reduces their their influence um, on media outlets for sure because now they're no longer a, a big part of their of their funding or whatever. So yeah, yeah. speaking of health, okay, <clears throat> we have uh, early access Black Friday for our programs, but part of this is you can win five days yeah. at one of the, at the Mind Pump House. And the reason why I said health. The Mind Pump House, first of all, it's a sick, it's an amazing location. It's Park, it's it's right by Park City, Utah. Incredible skiing, great outdoors, one of the best places to go. But the house is optimized. Mm -hmm. Like we put in there, we have a, a plunge cold system. So you can go in there, do your cold dip. We have the sauna, red light therapy. We have a gym in the garage. We have uh, sleep systems on the mm -hmm. bed. It's like you go there and you're gonna you're gonna do all the health yeah. stuff. Yeah. That you want to do you while experience all those nice little biohacks, <clears throat> all those biohacks. I, I mean, I, this is the most ten years we've been doing this. So this is the most excited I've been for the you know Black Friday and the you know November month for us. Like it's always a good good time for the business. But this year to do something where we're doing a giveaway like this, I think is really cool. Super curious to see like how well it does. And the fact that we're opening it up for two different winners and you're not limited to when you stay. So you want to you go pick the dates. Yeah, you guys pick the dates um, and be able to book them out. <clears throat> Obviously, if there's something that's booked in the next couple of weeks and you can't go, then we'll open it up for an entire year later if you need to. Uh, but you know, we want to be able to give them first dibs on uh, any time to stay there. So, and you get excited. more entries. The more programs of ours you get, uh, the more entries you get. So bundles give you the most entries, and so so you could have a shit ton of entries, and you're much Odds more likely go up. Yeah, yeah, and it's sixty percent off everything, right? Because we're doing early access for the contest, which means everything is sixty percent off. Speaking of the plunge, cold dip, uh, you were the one that was most consistent yeah. using that. Yeah, and I you been, brought up I haven't been lately. No, but you brought up using cold as a pre-workout yes i talked to someone else in the gym the other day who <clears throat> heard us talk about that on the podcast started doing it and said that they eliminated their pre-workout they no longer drink I, caffeine or a pre-workout yeah that makes sense the the adrenaline rush that i get and i'm and this coming from a caffeine junkie caffeine lover even when i uh wean all the way off and i come back to caffeine because that's always a good time when you reintroduce it after it's been a while, oh, yeah, it's a yeah, fun, it's fun a, it is a fun time. Fun it's, like, it's like, oh, this is what this does. I forgot, <laughs> yeah. you know? I remember you. But even that, because I'm very aware of that, because I do that, I cycle it often throughout the year. And so I know what that feels like. The d Jumping into the plunge pre-workout is greater than that, by far. It's longer lasting, so too. So you know what he said, too? He said he eliminated his pre-workout, because he heard us talk <laughs> about plunge. He bought one. Started using it, started using it in the morning because that's when I work out. And he goes, he goes in his, in his, he has it at his house, jumps in there, gets up, dries off, gets in the car, makes it to the gym. And he's like, I don't take a pre work, I don't take caffeine. I'm way more hyped, way more focused, yep. and I have no pain. Mm. He said he so used to have to all warm the, up. The yes. Inflammation. Because I asked him, I said, yeah. you know, I didn't ask you this when you said it. I said, are you stiff from being cold? He goes, no. No, opposite. Yeah. He goes, I get into my lifts and I am not stiff. I, I move great. I'm hyped, no caffeine. And it lasts no crash. It lasts way longer. So somebody else was telling me um, about that. I I think that's what, wow. it's funny too because and this is so this is why it got it got marketed terrible because there, obviously there was a huge wave of people that came 
all that started poking at the science, right? They started saying things just like, you know, because because it was pitched and it was sold originally as the recovery process yeah, yeah, to build yeah. muscle. Yeah. And that was where all the holes were being put. It's like, I never even cared for yeah. it like that. That's not how I, I don't We're use it. We're not pitching that to build muscle. No, dude. I, you want to talk about something that literally- Don't use it post-workout. Use it pre-workout. Pre-workout yes, is, is the move for that. By the way, there's have you, you we always <clears throat> talked about this. Remember the studies on the cold gloves? Yeah. yeah. And and people doing like ex, like an exceptional amount of reps more I'm, on the I'm second set. Those. I, feel, I want to try that. But hold on. I wonder if there's a similar effect. Of from course. Using the cold, yeah. uh, the plunge. 100%. Sure. Oh, of course. So your performance goes through the roof. What? You have no pain. You don't need a stimulant like caffeine. You do yeah, not. Yeah. So what I find myself getting is you I'm don't sure. get, you don't get fatigued. I mean, the first half of your workout is like your body trying to warm up still yeah. mm -hmm. because you, when you sit in that cold plunge for a few minutes i get myself up that's to all four, you need it, it brings your core temperature down so much that all the movement and exercise you do it's still rising so it takes a while before you actually I really heat up bet you i'll be careful how i say this i don't know how big of an impact this would have on actual like numbers uh, on the scale however i bet you fat oxidation increases when you cold dip before you work out because it does activate brown fat. It does activate the thermal, mm. the, 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 the type of fat that you have on your body that uh, is active. There's two types of fat, two main types of fat. Brown fat is the thermogenic type. It's the active type. The more of that you have, the, the better you are off versus the white fat. And mm. cold uh, therapy increases the percentage of that. So I bet you if you do a pre-workout, besides feeling better, probably also increase to some extent fat oxidation, I would bet, huh? to some extent. Because of what you said, they're trying to warm up the body. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes deal. sense. It makes sense. I know I, I know. just from personal trying it and doing it, uh, it's it's money. And if you've never tried it before and you like cold plunging, do it before the workout. All right. Well, the shout out. Uh, well, Justin talked about doing a mission for them, uh, building houses in Mexico. It's the church that I go to, Venture Church. In Los Gatos, want to give them a shout out. Great place. The staff there is incredible. They've welcomed us with uh, very warm, open arms. Just uh, it's one a of the best places. Great community people it's, for sure. It's amazing. Probiotics are beneficial. They help your gut health. They reduce inflammation. In some cases, alleviate things like anxiety. They're incredible, but they're not all created equal. Well, there's a company called Seed. This has been ranked as the world's best probiotic. It's the only one that we promote and sell. If you want the benefits of beneficial bacteria. Use seed. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump. Get 25% off your first month's order. All right, back to the show. First question is from CC Davies. Is there an alternative alternative to Turkish get-ups that works the same muscles or movement patterns in less time? So here's the value of a Turkish get-up. So some exercises, the value is in the, yeah, this isn't really the a development of the muscle. Exercise. Yeah, some kind of athletic performance, whatever. Turkish getup really is about the function. Yeah. It's about the the function of standing all the way up with good stability from your hand all the way down to, you know, down your hips, your core, down to your legs. So, no, there really isn't, well, uh, you know, you could work all the individual muscles, but you wouldn't be training the, that pattern. There, I think there's an even better way to communicate this. The Turkish getup, I wouldn't even look. Okay, so it's it's like four exercises in one. Yeah. That's what makes it so awesome. Yeah. You know, some of the benefits that you get from a windmill, you get from a Turkish get-up. Some of the mm -hmm. benefits you get from a hip thrust, you get from a Turkish get-up. Some of the mm -hmm. benefits you get from an overhead carry, you get from the Turkish get-up. That's mm -hmm. why it's so awesome. Arm bar. So don't think of it like, oh, what can I do? Because it takes me so long to do a Turkish get-up. You're eliminating four other exercises that you would do individually to get the same thing. So you're actually saving time by doing a Turkish get-up if that's what the... Cause oh, I'm a good point. Because yeah. I'm assuming this person is thinking, God, the Turkish get-up takes me 15 minutes just yeah. to do three sets of that, understandably. But what you need to understand is if I wanted to get the same desired outcome, I'd have to put a hip thrust in there. I'd have to put an overhead carry in there. I'd have to put a wood meal in there. Ninja, yeah. And so you're actually getting something that hits all of that. That's why it's such an awesome movement mm -hmm. to incorporate into your routine. And if you were to break it up into single exercises, you would end up spending more time. Yeah. And there's, and, there, and you know, one of the challenges too is Blue because- Crunch. Of, of, yeah, I didn't even add that. Crunch, yeah. an ab in there. I mean, yeah. that's every Turkish kid, like five exercises in one. Yeah, one of the challenges is that bodybuilding workout programming has gotten people so conditioned to thinking of body parts that some exercises don't in get included in workouts because people don't know what body part. Mm -hmm. Like, where do I put a Turkish getup? Is it on leg day, core day, shoulder day, back day? Yeah. 
And it's like you can put it on any day, yeah. but it's really the movement pattern. It's teaching the body to all those muscles, everything to communicate and work together. And if you get good at them, you tend to get better at a lot of different things. That's the value of the Turkish getup. Next question is from Kristen Glody. For a freshly postpartum mama who has been cleared to work out again, which three programs would you recommend in order to start and progress through? Assuming little to no workouts happen during pregnancy. Oh, I'll actually add that for yeah. us. Ma <coughs> Maps, starter. Starter, for yeah, sure. Yeah, starter. Ma and then anabolic. I, I would go anabolic, like, start in pre-phase. Symmetry. Yeah. And then either symmetry or performance. Yeah. I think would be a good, I I love that a good follow. Oh. But, but and, you, and it helps that, that she told us that there was, uh, assuming there was little workouts happening during pregnancy. You know, I want to say this, though. Um, even if you're working out during pregnancy, you, you, when, you're, when you're postpartum, your muscle recruitment patterns change so much, especially during the third trimester because of growing baby that you probably, it's still probably a good idea. I mean, I did with Katrina. I still yeah. started her in starter. Yep. She worked out all the way up until she, that baby exactly. popped out. And then we, I still made her go to starter. Now, I don't think we made it all the way through starter. I think I made her for at least a month or six weeks do starter. Yeah. And then I let her go into anabolic. Yeah. And I think I had her start uh, phase three of anabolic reverse, if I recall. Yeah, I, I, I talked about it. I remember experiencing this with clients. Like I'd have female clients who were, <laughs> active like they worked out with me before during and after mm -hmm. and then afterwards doing basic exercises they would get like si joint pain and yeah. back pain and i remember i had a physical therapist that worked for me at the time and she explained to me she goes sal because of their the growing baby the recruitment patterns change you have to retrain the new recruitment patterns otherwise they're mm -hmm. going to go do these exercises and they have the strength to do a squat and a deadlift and overhead press but they don't have the same yeah. recruitment pattern. You don't want to jump stability past the stability and all of that. So yeah. crucial to set you up long term. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you're going to be fighting a lot of those um, stability issues and a lot of that core and control. Yeah, and and this is also why I think postpartum physical therapy should be a staple. I think that's totally. that'd be so valuable uh, for women, especially for the pelvic floor yes. and core. Like those two areas. The recruitment patterns there change. Your pelvic floor you need to heal and, and rebuild. That affects your stability, your core stability. And when you don't have that, you can be fit everywhere else, and you'll start to run into all these different problems. And they're going to be weird, strange back pain and whatever. And you can't figure it out. Uh, Map Starter is really, really good place to start. It's early access to Black Friday. All Maps programs, all bundles, sixty percent off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get ten entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right. Back to the show. Next question is from Cole Rowe. How important is getting 10,000 steps if you also worked out the same day? Well, that's an interesting clever. Yeah, point. that's good. You know, steps mm -hmm. Steps are a great way just to be active. Do you, you know, know there's a, do you know there's a study around 10,000 steps? Like, it's actually like the reason why that's become so popular. And I forget what, it, like, longevity wise, if people just did 10,000 steps, like the amount, like the. I, like, so I, there was a study that came out that showed that the about, base amount. Yeah, over 80% yeah. of the results you would get from walking come from 8,000 steps. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, eight to 10,000 is where you get the. So, working out, the great thing about strength training is it's so protective. So, you can lift weights twice a week and get these great benefits that, you know, just you don't have to work out every day for it. But on top of that, being active every day is just good for you. And so, steps are a great way to. To track that, right? If I'm tracking my steps, I'm hitting 10,000 a day. I'm probably active more often than not. If mm -hmm. I'm like 5,000 steps or less, I'm probably sitting more often than not. And, and regardless of working out, there are additional benefits to just moving. Well, I mean, this is interesting that mm -hmm. this, this, we chose this question and what I talked about today with my 10,000 steps. Because if I was just thinking about it from an aesthetic purpose, I can make the case for like, well, I worked out today, so mm -hmm. technically 
I did something that's going to aesthetically improve my body. And if I, any extra calories will get partitioned over to building muscle. So I don't necessarily yeah. need to take 10,000 mm -hmm. steps, but instead one of the things I'm trying to practice thinking about is like, man, I'm just, I'm a better human when I make that, when I move that much, because mm -hmm. if I have an art, if I'm only at 8,000 steps and sure I worked out, well, I still need another two, 3,000 steps. You know what? I'll go help my wife clean up the house a little bit, or I'll do some dishes, or maybe I'll go outside with my son and I'll play for an extra half hour that I probably wouldn't have played. Like, so for me, like that's uh, yes, you're okay. Like you're not. Uh, it's not a bad thing. If you're if you didn't hit ten thousand steps, that's like it's not like there's this magical thing that happens when you hit ten thousand steps. But I mean, I also think that trying to learn how to attach the extra activity to other things that enhance and improve your life is a good practice to do, anyways. And so, setting a goal to do at least that to Sal's point, I think, is uh, a good idea. Next question is from Achilles Self: Are chiropractors legit? What are the benefits? What are the cons? <laughs> Good ones are. Subluxation. I mean, we know some of the best, right? Yeah. Jordan Shallow, Dr. Uh, Brink. Yeah. I mean, those guys are both chiropractors. They're movement first uh, chiropractors. Some of the so. most brilliant, some of the most brilliant body specialists I've ever met in my life, movement specialists I've ever met in my life are those two guys, uh, and they're both chiropractors. Yeah, I think a, a red flag is a chiropractor that just does adjustments. Yeah. Right? Oh, they yeah. Just, you just go in. You whack them, crack them. You get an I adjustment, you leave. Uh, chiropractors that do adjustments, but also combine it with correctional exercise, those are the ones that are really good. Because otherwise, uh, adjustments are temporary. And adjustments provide relief because they allow tension to be released from small joints that are normally just tight and not moving. That's what happens. Yeah. What happens is they go and they adjust you, because you have all these tight muscles trying to protect you for whatever imbalance that you have, they know how to adjust you to a point where they create a little bit of, like almost a stretch, like you're stretching the, the ligaments or the muscles surrounding you, you get this nice relief, ah, pain is gone, I feel good. But if you don't correct why that's happening in the first place, you're just going to so go back. Right back to protection mode. Yeah, this is when you get those chiropractors that have like just, oh yeah, you, you see me every week for... 10 years. It's yeah. Like, well, why didn't you fix the problem? You know? Yeah. It's, it's like foam rolling without finding the root cause and fixing it. Same thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, in, I was guilty of this for a long time of like, Oh, realizing like, man, my hips would hurt so bad. I just got a foam roll before I work out every time or foam roll every time before I play basketball. And it's like not realizing like, well, why, why do my hips hurt? Yeah, you know? yeah. And then what do I do in order to address it? Oh, it's a, it's a lack of hip mobility, stability, and strength. Like, Oh, okay. So if I address, stability and strength and mobility in my hips will that go away oh shit it did yeah. look at that like so my south mile fascia release like this foam rolling is like this right so is chiropractic work so and that's such an easy way to gauge it too is like if you go see a chiropractor they do all their adjustments and they just book your next appointment run that's yeah. a terrible chiropractor yeah. now if they tell you they adjust you and they go here's the movements i want you to practice some of the good ones will print out stuff or even better like brink did like brink didn't even put me on a no table. he does assessments yeah. he didn't even he didn't even adjust me he literally made me take my shoes off get barefoot walk do calf raises do, do a body weight stretches. squat yeah. yeah he wanted to see the way my body moved and then he pointed out to me what's going on and where my breakdown is and then he'd show me a couple corrective moves and be like you need to be doing more of this in fact i don't think brink ever put me on the table all the time. I don't I think see. he ever adjusted. He's never, I always wanted him to. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Come right. on, just crack me. He did do, um, what's the what's what's that called? Scraping. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. that? Like, he's done some of that with me before, where like to, to really get me relief on some stuff for temporarily and then tell me to do the work. But there you go. I mean, there's a guy who is a chiropractor and he's- I was oh. just going to say the best chiropractors I've been to, 10% uh, or less of the time was, was adjustments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of it was assessment, exercise, yeah. um, you know, correctional movements. And then maybe they throw an adjustment. And, uh, here and there. by the way, that's amazing. So if you find a chiropractor that has that kind of knowledge and treats that way, you got yourself a, a very a very valuable asset. But if you got a chiropractor who gets you on the table and just gives you relief and then books your next I, appointment, I went to one fucking once. Run. I went to one once that, and this is actually a model, by the way. I don't. There's a name for it. Maybe Doug knows because I've gone through that model where you show up yep. and they have ten or five beds. And everybody's on the bed, and they go adjust here, adjust you here. You do a stim machine here. first. They give you a little massage, and then it's and it's a, it, it was a business model. Yes. It was a business model that taught chiropractors how to make the most amount of money. Yeah. It wasn't a model of yeah. like this is how you help. Yeah, I've been I've been to ones where they it's like it's literally ten minute, uh, ten little fifteen minute increments, and you show up. They do the whole thing on the computer, saying they go, oh yeah, you have you know this, that, one inch shoulder elevation here, this that, like get you on the table, correct you, and then like oh come see me three times a week for the next twelve weeks or like that, and they have this like whole presentation and they just like sell you on that the whole yeah. time and you're like 
And I, I've ran into so many of those. In fact, the story behind how Brink happened was Brink came to one of our, Dr. Brink came to one of our live events. Did you talk shit about I Kirby? did. I talked shit. I was, I, he introduced him as, he introduced himself and he introduced himself as a chiropractor. And I straight up told him like, first time ever meeting him, like, I don't like chiropractors. <laughs> <laughs> and how he won me over. He's like, me too. He goes, me too. I don't either. I went, okay, I'm All listening right. now, okay. right? Yeah. And then and then he's like, and then he told me about how he was a fan of the show and he's listening to all the stuff that we communicate and he's heard us talk about the chiropractor thing and everything like that. I'm like, okay, I'll come see this guy. And he yeah. blew my mind. He yeah. blew my mind. I mean, that guy has taught me more about my own body he, than I had brilliant. previously 10 years before being a personal trainer. And so you, a, a, chiro, a good chiropractor can be amazing, but you just need to know what you're looking for. That's right. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible. But not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body